Last month, software group ISA Holdings blamed the strong rand for the small decrease in revenue for the year to February, while revenue fell 62 million rand from 62.4 million rand. Turnover increased 3% to 59.2 million rand from 57.5 million rand, which uh, the company said was disappointing and fell short of its anticipated double-digit growth for the period. ISA Holdings market cap 150 million, Altec stock, um, price earnings ratio 10.8, dividend yield 10%. Uh, that includes a 1.7 one, one, uh, 1 cents from share premium. We're given benefit of the doubt and throw that in. Anthony, I know it's the stock was one of your hot picks a, a month or so ago. They're in the security space. What I like about the, the IT security, everyone's talking about the cloud. The cloud is a commodity. You know, we can add more hard drives, anyone can make a cloud. They're securing that cloud. We have seen Sony's woes, Sony Network. We've seen Citibank getting hacked. We've seen security coming to the fore. Security perhaps is the real deal space in IT broadly? Yes, it's very exciting. Not a day goes by without some kind of news event or item coming across our screens talking about a cy cyber attack. In fact, you know, the list is endless mm. in terms of top companies around the world that have sustained attacks in the last couple of months. Um, this, this company is ideally positioned to take advantage of IT security solutions. Um, of the top 200 companies in the country in terms of IT security spend, sorry, top 1,000, they service 200 of them. Um, we think this is a particularly strong growth sector within IT. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the growth in data that's going to be created and stored in the next nine years, according to The Economist, that number is going to go up by a factor of 34. Mm -hmm. So massive amounts of data are going to be created and stored and predominantly stored on the cloud. And remote access is going to be, well, people are going to access that through remote devices. They want to get into it from home, from uh, on the road, so etc. Mobile, mobile workforces, laptops. where they're out on the road, where companies are allowing or migrating their IT systems onto the, onto the cloud or, th or access to it through the internet, um, or require kind of data access security um, and data loss prevention. And these, guys, these are the guys that actually provide these services and solutions. Mm -hmm to the top corporates in the country. Chris, I know you don't really predominantly focus on, on the technology 150 sector. 150 million you, rand <laughs> stocks. <laughs> How do you feel about cloud computing, cyber uh, wars, and <laughs> <laughs> the fact that ISA Holdings can protect you from these and assist you to get onto the cloud? Yeah, well, you know, just uh, following on from what Anthony was saying, I mean, working in a big corporate, I'm very acutely aware of the kind of things yeah. that we're, we're talking about here. Uh, the kind of incredible uh, security protocols that you have to go through these days in terms of remotely just getting in, in, into your, into your, um, into your, 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 your work and your data. Um, so yes, I can see tremendous opportunities for these guys. I mean, it, it's interesting the whole um, sector these days um, is becoming, you know, with, with Dimension Data having gone out of the, 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 the index um, earlier this year, um, you know, it's, it, there's a lot of small, highly entrepreneurial companies, you know, like this, which are, are really making the mark. Anthony, dividend yield, 10%, some of that's share premium. Uh, first thing I do when I see a 10% dividend yield, I think because the share price has been absolutely under pressure. But if I go back, these guys are massive dividend payers. They seem to take their profit, keep a little bit for you know, the odd lunch or something, and, and pass the rest on to shareholders. Yeah, they've got 41 million rands worth of cash on the balance sheet. They don't need cash to grow. So their dividend policy is to pay out 100% of their earnings every year. Um, you know, I think it's, this is a great investment opportunity. You, know, it's, it, you basically pay to hold it. So there's fantastic mm -hmm. dividend yield, 10% dividend yield. It's trading on 11 times earnings uh, or 9 times forward earnings. We think that um, you know, this company will be bought out. Just a yes, I was gonna s my next question was someone's going to buy it uh, and I was looking at the shareholders. It wouldn't be an easy buyout, but that's probably something down the line. Well, I think you, 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 know, you obviously need management to stay in. Management effectively control the business. Um, you know, we think that Didart has lost its security team, so they're going to have yeah. to beef it up somehow. These skills are very scarce. Um, yeah, yeah, H have tried to buy them. Didart has tried to buy them twice. <laughs> so we think that you know, it's just a question of price, it's, and it will happen eventually. OK, Chris, hot or not? Oh, I think conceptually it's very hot indeed, <laughs> yes. OK. <laughs> yeah, we think it's hot. Very hard. So you're buying at these levels, waiting for a deal, possible deal going forward? Yes. Okay. Big smile on his face. Uh, hot. And, and disclaimer, <coughs> I have been buying the last couple of weeks, I, okay. and I will buy more when the price, if I can get at the price I like. It's hot. I got it. I think I would like more. And hold on.
to those shares. Okay, fantastic. All right, now time for our guest hot stock picks. Chris Gilmore's uh, hot stock pick is BHV Billison. From the tiny to the hey. giant. Yeah, well, exactly. Um, I was expecting some, you know, random company we haven't <laughs> heard of, but yes, BHP, <laughs> a darling on the JSC. You know, I mean, I suppose uh, a lot of these big diversified miners have been out of favour the past few months. Um, mm. They've been uh, taking a bit of a beating, in fact. But, um, you know, in, in, in a couple of months' time, we're going to have their results out, we're going to have Anglo's results out, and I think they're going to be very, very good indeed. Um, you know, Although Anglo, uh, the past six months or so, might have looked a bit better in terms of its, its, its turnaround potential, I think BHP has always been the better structured company from day one mm. uh, in terms of where the demand is coming from these days for, for base metals and minerals, this type of thing. And of course, they've got a big petroleum uh, aspect in there as well. So I think, um, you know, I, I don't think it, 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 it's, it's expensive at these levels. I really don't. It I know has a lot, come a down, lot of people in fact, do, but, um, according to the technical graphs, apparently we might just see a little bit more weakness before we see a retracement. Could be. It's a good time to buy. But um, I think, um, well, ho hopefully by the time we get, we get into August when the results come out, a lot of the, uh, the noise that we're currently experiencing um, on, on, on world markets will be out of the way and uh, people will be able to make more of an informed um, decision as to, as to what um, lies behind the BHP bulletin. Okay, let's delve into Anthony's hot stock pick, ELB Group. ELB Group is a construction company that um, is specialises in doing port infrastructure investments, so the cranes, the bulk offloading and onloading type equipment. It also does washing plants for coal collieries. Um, it does um, uh, mining equipment distribution. Um, the nice thing about this company is it's got a great margin of safety in terms of valuation. About half its market cap is in cash. Mm -hmm. um, it's grew earnings phenomenally in the last period. We think it will grow nicely. It's on a forward P of about six, on a dividend yield of about three. Um, it's exceptionally well, well run and conservatively, conservatively run business with a strong management team. We think um, you know, it is very well positioned in terms of the niche markets it serves and is yeah. a great investment. So buying at these levels then, Indeed. Anthony. Okay, yes, Simon, so BHP, uh, BHP, I like it, and actually, oddly enough, do I was you, buying some this last week. Okay. BHP, I hold it, I like it. Again, it's like an SAB Miller, but it may be a little more exciting. Um, not the senior Miller by any stretch, <laughs> but um, <laughs> ELB, I like, I like a lot. They're doing the mining without getting their hands dirty. I like that cash underpinning. I like a stock that can say, you know what, you buy me and half of, your, half of what you're paying for is, is, is solid cash, like it. Don't own, but certainly own. Okay, so stock. for you, ELB Group, Chris? Yeah, as I, I, I've heard of this a couple of times. I mean, it's, it's not something I've, I've looked at in recent times. This is, a, this, this is a company that's been around for a long time, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. Early in, in different it was uh, E.L. Bateman and Bait yeah. Pro was spun out of it. Yeah. This is the core of the E.L. Bateman group. So yeah, I, I, I like what I hear, I must admit. So you're going to delve into it a little bit further? I then, think I should. Okay, good, looking into it. Okay, uh, Anthony, BHP Billison. Yeah, we like the story. Um, I think that uh, the, you know, the diversified miners' equity prices are discounting significant retracement in kind of under mm. underlying metals prices. We think that as quantitative easing gets extended into QE3 in the, in the States, uh, we think it's an inevitability. You know, the dollar will weaken and demand for commodity prices will come back. We think that there's tremendous value in the diversified miners' and we throw in a default by a very small country <laughs> in, in Europe? <laughs> uh, mentioning Greece, perhaps. Oh, no, yes, of course uh, not. <laughs> yeah, that, that is, we think, uh, an unlikely scenario. We think that they will, well, they will default, but we think it will be a managed default. An orderly default. An orderly default, and um, we think it's already been priced. So the there markets. we go. And we don't only give you a hot stock picks from our guests, but also uh, the announcement that QE3 is inevitable and uh, that a country in Europe is going to default. Very interesting times.